Yes, now we are in step number 7, it is the design of end bearing stiffener. So, uh, before designing the stiffener, we have to calculate the load, the amount of load which is carried by the wheel. For this, we have to use this clause, clause number 874. Uh, clause number 874 is bearing stiffener clause. Fw is B1 plus N2 and this one and so on. So, in this formula B1 you have to assume that is we have taken 125 because we know the uh, width of the flange is higher. Uh, that's why we have taken a higher value of B1 and N2 is 2.5 into Tf plus R1. Here R1 is the root of radius. Uh, generally, it has a value in case of rolled section. But uh, as this is the built up section, so we have taken R1 as 0. So finally, uh, we are putting B1 and N2 in this formula and getting the amount of load which is equal to Fw. So that means this amount of load is taken by the wave which is lesser than the total shear force. So we can say that the wave is not carrying the sufficient shear force at the support. So, rest of the load that means 1908 minus 909 that amount of load should be taken by the end bearing stiffener. So, we have to design the end bearing stiffener and we are assuming the thickness as 16 mm. Now, coming to the uh, available outstand part of the wave of the flange. So, that is the width of the flange minus thickness of the wave divided by 2. So, there are some permissible values of the uh, end bearing stiffener uh, from this clause 8712. Yes, from this clause 8712, it is clearly written that the maximum permissible weight is 20 TQ into epsilon, where TQ is the width of the stiffener, but the maximum effective weight should be 14 TQ into epsilon. So, we have done like this. So, maximum permissible outstand it is coming 320 and the maximum effective outstand it is 224. Whereas, we have the available space of 272. So, we are providing this weight 224 into the thickness we have assumed earlier that is 16 So, the design of um, end bearing stiffener is done. Now, we have to check in some criteria of this stiffener. The first one is check for buckling at of the end bearing stiffener or check for buckling. Uh, this is the figure you can clearly see. This is the wave and end bearing stiffener is provided like this. So, this is a plan view or you can say the top view. So, from clause number 8715, yes, from clause number 8715, let's see. Yes, in this clause it is said that the uh, effective length of the wave on each side of the center line of the stiffener is limited to 20 times the wave thickness. That means it is saying that effective area of stiffener that is equal to the area of the stiffener itself plus the area of the wave which length is 20 into Tw on each side of the stiffener. That means here we are getting the length of total length of wave uh, is 20 Tw plus 20 Tw which is 40 Tw. So, this 40 Tw is only the length. So, the effective area we can calculate like this 224 into 16 that is this part. Uh, as two parts of the stiffener are there that that is why it is multiplied by 2 plus 20 into 16 that is 20 into Tw into 2 both side into 16. 16 is the thickness of this wave. So, in this way we can find out the effective area and again we have to find out the moment of inertia along the x x axis. x x axis is this one. You can see this one is the x x axis and after getting the moment of inertia yes we have to find out the radius of gyration and from this radius of gyration, this KL by R, KL by R, you know, KL is 0.7 into D. That means, D means the depth of the wave. Uh, it is given in clause number 8715. And uh, for this KL by R, 14.4, from table 9C, as we know, we are getting the value of FCD by interpolation. 
right and finally we are uh, getting the buckling resistance that is pd ae means the effective area and fcd so we are fi finally getting the pd which is obviously greater than uh, the maximum shear force hence the stiffness is safe in buckling step number 9 now we have to check the bearing capacity of the end bearing stiffener so in this bearing capacity we have to consider one thing that as we know in this figure you can see this corner portions are welded that's why so some portion of this end bearing stiffener here have to cobbed right so uh, that's why we are assuming this cobbed portion this length this curved portion here it is measured 15 mm so this is the assumptions we are curved a 15 mm of length of this end bearing stiffener so that's why the remaining part is 209 mm so we are assuming that width of stiffener available for bearing that is 209 mm so uh, as this 209 mm is only in touch with the flange it will take the bearing strength from the flange and in this way we have to find out uh, from the simple formula the bearing strength of the stiffener which is greater than the value 1908 minus 909 this much of bearing strength the stiffener should carry but the stiffener capacity is greater than that hence it is safe now coming to step number 10 in step number 10 we have to check the end bearing stiffener against torsional resistance we can see it from this clause yes clause number 879b we can see in clause number 879 part b this thing we have to satisfy is should be greater than or equal to 0 0.34 alpha s d cube into tcf so is is very simple is means the moment of inertia of the stiffener part only so we know the thickness of the stiffener is 16 mm and uh, the length of the stiffeners 1 stiffener to 24 2 stiffeners 2 into 224 so it is b into d cube divided by 12 that is is but here the alpha s for this alpha s you have to depend on the value of llt by ry so first let's find out the llt by ry yes um, to find out this llt by ry we have to calculate the moment of inertia about y y axis that means the vertical axis simply the moment of inertia is find out then area area means the total area of the i section and finally ry after getting the ry we are getting llt by ry but now we have to check the value of llt by ry falls in which criteria it is not lesser than it is not lesser than 50 it is not within 50 to 100 it is greater than 50 that's why you have to use alpha s is equal to this formula yes we have used this one alpha s is equal to this formula in this way we can find out alpha s so alpha s is, is replaced by this formula then d is the overall depth and TCF is nothing but the uh, thickness of the flange. So here we can uh, clearly show that IS is greater than this value. Hence the stiffness is safe in torsional buckling. And this is the last step. We have to design the connection of end bearing stiffener. In the same way uh, like the previous connection, first we have to assume the size of the weld which is taken 5 mm here then you have to find out the strength of weld per unit length right then now we are checking the available width of the stiffener connected to flange that means we know only this part this part is 224 minus 15 15 is minus because 15 is cobbed up from the stiffener length stiffener width and the tension capacity as the conventional formula of tension 0.9 into a n into f u by gamma m1 will get the tdm now the shear force which is subject to 
subjected to the weld that is q1 q1 is the total tensile force divided by the length you can weld the length which is available for welding now see in this picture the length available for welding is from here to here so we know the total depth is 1800 so 15 millimeter you have to reduce from the bottom and 15 millimeter you have to reduce from the top so we are reducing total um, 1800 minus 2 into 15 and again 1 by 2 is multiplied half is multiplied with this value as we know um, that as we know that in the previous figure we can see yes in this stiffener and web connection in one side of stiffener there is two welds number one number two that's why it is divided by two and finally we'll get the value of q1 and it should be lesser than the capacity fwd yes it is shown there fwd that is the capacity of the weld that is greater than q1 q1 is the force subjected to the weld hence the welding portion is safe and this is the final diagram of the cross section of the uh, flate girder uh, you can see the dimensions of flange and wave is given so it is end bearing stiffener uh, only this four parts of the end bearing stiffener is coped where the length is 15 millimeter it is shown here and again from this vertical axis it is also 15 millimeter uh, so here we are completing the design of plate girder remember two things we are avoiding here number one we are avoiding the design of intermediate transverse stiffener number two we are avoiding the design of end panel. Thank you.